Hi, welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. As you see, we're not in our normal place. We went and looked at the Northern Lights. We'll try to. So we're in a bed at breakfast with a little hobbit house. Uh, but I did want to talk about the Guardians of Justice, a new Netflix original series that just dropped uh, today. I think it's a real mix. Animation, stop motion, claymation, 8-bit video game footage. And it's definitely a kind of commentary on today's society as well as taking the Justice League and giving them like their counterparts. Like every single character that you have, Aquaman, uh, Batman, it all is basically them. But it's taking them and trying not to get sued, I guess, and changing it, making it relevant for today. We have eight episodes ranging from about 20 minutes to about, uh, I think the last one's just over 40 minutes. And that last episode is quite harrowing. It doesn't finish up the story story either but I have to say I think this is gonna split fans because it's a fans of a series that nobody knew about just yet but fans of this type of series because it's really quirky it's weird think along the lines of Kung Fury if you've seen that the half an hour 80s nostalgia then that's what you're getting in this there's definitely 80s nostalgia synthwave score and the actors in this, some of them, they're going to pitch up and be like, wait a minute, I know that person. And wait a minute, I know that person. It is fun, but there's a lot going on in here. Between what the commentary is of the series, we have that kind of generic, uh, who's the bad guy? There's a big, big bad coming from space. And eventually, uh, we're going to have to go against them. So whether your moral justice rule is, I'm going to start beating people. Think of if Batman actually turned evil. That is kind of the story that we get in here. And it starts off with a big kind of punch in the face. If Superman was killed, uh, what do the Justice League then do? And so that's kind of like the Guardians of Justice. I do think it's really interesting and it is fun. And I caught myself laughing out loud a couple of times. Not because they were telling jokes, but just because of what I was seeing on screen. Was really weird, was uh, different to what I was expecting. And also quite relevant for today. The sort of laugh that you go... <laughs> You know, you, you can't say that, can you? Can they do that? It's it's that sort of thing. Or is so relevant, you know, from Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan uh, to what's going on in our government around the world. It really is relevant. So it's an interesting commentary, but as well as an interesting animated live action. The live action is mostly acted in sets where people are just talking. You don't see them do too much action. When it comes to the action, they translate that between the animation and the claymation uh, obviously to save budget and it really does remind me of Kung Fury in the 80s with that synth wave I think for people who love the 80s stuff or are very nostalgic of like those those type of films or series You're gonna love this There's also pause worthy moments in this series where you wondering if they're referencing something else just out of the corner of your eye I noticed like the last action hero Arnold Schwarzenegger there are little moments where they're referencing other things in our world that are kind of nods to nostalgia of all sorts of entertainment media. It does feel like an amalgamation that's thrust together. I'm not sure it works technically altogether, but it is seriously different and very creative, which is why I think it's going to split fans. I, I enjoyed it, but I'm not sure I loved it. So I'm going to give it three and a half Nicolas Cage's out of five. Let me know if you want to see more of this. I believe they're probably going to do more. Um, very clever to try and do this sort of thing now and be outside of that box. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long Tuesday.